Welcome to Conversations in a Vintage Shop, a podcast from behind my counter between customers. Join me while I sit behind my retail counter and just have a conversation with you or with myself. While I look out the window, observe what I see, things that are happening in the store today, throughout the week, and just fun little stories that I have from my time as a business owner. This is something that you find interesting, and keep listening, and I appreciate you. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Conversations in a Vintage Shop a podcast where I bring conversations I have in my little old vintage shop in Fargo, North Dakota to you. Now, I have to preface this as I do every single episode that you will more than likely be able to hear my shop sound system in the background because, again, I record this podcast in my shop live. And today I'm playing The Last Shadow Puppets Radio. I love myself some Arctic Monkeys, Alex Turner, love The Last Shadow Puppets. It's been my go-to station lately. But on today's episode, this is going to be the last episode of 2023. I'm going to take an even longer break to really go hardcore into recording more episodes and getting those all finished, recorded, planned out, and uploaded Because everywhere, no matter what industry you're in, January and February can be very slow months. So I thought, why not just give myself that project (laughs) and give myself plenty of time so I don't burn myself out. And I already have topics that are going to be up on deck for next year. And I'm really going to be going into talking about things that I'm passionate about and stories If you've listened to my previous episodes about Julian's auctions, I'm going to be going into the history of the people who own the pieces that I purchased, give more provenance, talk more about being a small business owner in a small red state that doesn't necessarily appreciate vintage shops like other parts in the United States and the world for that matter. (laughs) But today's episode, I thought it'd be fun to just give a recap and a wrap up of 2023 and this year of business for Carmine and Hayworth, my little shop. Whether you own a business or you are just living life, working day to day, trying to survive, this has been a very interesting year and it's been a very hard year. For a lot of reasons, mentally, me- mentally, physically, emotionally, you name it. It's the number one thing I hear across the board from people I talk to every day, friends, other business owners, customers, is just how exhausted people are and how people are, are losing the hope a bit. And let me tell you, I'm right there with you. I haven't found a lot of people that feel differently. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about what we've done this past year. How we felt about it. Things that have been different. Things that have changed. And what we're going to have to do next year. So if that's something that you're interested in, keep listening. So as a little side story, I had a customer come in a few weeks ago and they asked me if I had had any more customer stories that I was going to share or if I was going to do another episode. And to be honest, I haven't quite thought about it because especially now more than ever, if you work in retail every day, there's something. So it has to be pretty 
creepy or severe for me to actually remember it, which is really sad. But the other night, now that we have, you know, daylight savings time, here in Fargo, it gets darker out earlier. And when I'm in the shop, I have all my lights on, it's dark outside, I can't see anybody out there unless they literally have, you have your face pressed to the door and are knocking on it. But every, people can see in here. You can see me just fine. I just can't really see you. And I had two of my friends come in, and it was a pretty slow night. I was just getting work done, typing on my computer. And I had two friends come in, and they asked me if I noticed the guy that had been standing outside my shop for 20 minutes. And I look at them, and I say, no, I haven't had anyone in here. I don't know what you mean and they said that they were standing outside watching as this guy with a duffel bag was standing at my door staring in directly at me for a whole 20 minutes and they were waiting to see if he was going to leave or if he was going to come in and they just said we want to just wanted to let you know but we we stayed because we didn't know if he was going to come in if he, what he was doing and that was really freaking creepy. <laughs> and it just reaffirms the fact that I hate daylight savings time. <laughs> but that's my creepy story for this month. And I hope that's it. I hope that's all the worst it gets. <laughs> So, looking back on 2023, it goes without saying that post-pandemic shutdown, nothing has been the same. There is no normal. We're pretty much all just relearning how to do things every single day, every single year. I don't care what economists say or, you know, retail trade magazines or anything. There is no pattern anymore. There used to always be some kind of shopping pattern where people would, let's say, shop for the holidays in November and December. Last year, people did it in October, September. The year before that, I had a lot of people do it in August and September. It, it's always different. And this year was no exception. So here in the Midwest, we have very severe weather. It's common in the winter months for us to hit 20 below, sub-zero, blizzarding, nasty weather conditions. But at the start of 2023, in January and February, I know I was just ready for a slow couple of winter months, which that's typical. That's very average. Every business owner just builds in the expectation that that's how it's going to be. So I was perfectly right. I took my week off in January. I kind of bare bones did in the shop because I thought, well, it's not going to pick up early again until March, so I'm going to be good. Well, because we had better weather in January and February, those months were the polar opposite. No pun intended. And we were very busy. We even had an event in February. And they were great a great couple of months. The March and April, our part of the country got hit and just slammed with blizzards nonstop. So already the year had started off vastly different than prior years. So really, the weather played a huge part in how the first part of the year went for a lot of us small businesses. Um, us especially but also this year I decided as a business to do something a little bit different and those of us or those of you who have been following my shop since 2018 when we started off in a little tiny studio space and mainly did pop-ups usually every year since 2018 the shop has been a part of some kind of pop-up whether it be, you know, a market, a bazaar, 
in another local shop. One way or another, we were doing some kind of pop-up. But this year, I made a conscious decision to not do any pop-up markets this year at all. Anyone who's done a pop-up market, especially while you own a brick and mortar, know that it's really exhausting. And they're always worth it. But this year, I just wanted to take a, a break from it. I just wanted to take a break. And I'm really happy that I did because it gave me more time to focus on my store, my in-store experiences. And I found that that was a really good decision. I wasn't distracted. Now, that's not to say that in upcoming years, I'm not going to do any pop-ups, but I'm definitely going to be a lot more methodical and I'm really selective about what pop-ups or markets I do from now on. Not all markets or events are created equal, and some are not as great of an experience as they could be. So any pop-ups I do in the future, it's going to be a very, very particular reason and specialized. Because <laughs> it gets tiring, and when you do one, you put all that energy into it, you want it to be a great environment with a great experience and something that you can walk away from feeling good about. So that was kind of a, not a huge shift in the business this year, but one that I've become more comfortable reshaping. And I feel very good about that. (laughs) Now, this was also a year that I really had to do what my therapist says, and that's just save my energy and protect my energy. And again, owning and running a small business is hard. You really rely on the connections you make, networking, the people you meet, the community around you. But one thing that I've always had it's always been my Achilles heel is I've always been a yes person. (laughs) And that would always be the case with collabs, whether it be photo shoots, events, I mean, really anything like that. I know what it's like to just want to work with people and want someone to give your dream a chance but it also comes at the expense of you sometimes. And I've been very careful, and really this is more of a goal for 2024, but it was one that started manifesting in 2023, that I've had to really keep it concise on what kind of collaborations I do. And I love doing creative fashion, and photo shoot collaborations. That's what I love to do. I love doing film collaborations, theater collaborations. And that's where I get the most joy. In years past, I've done events. We had something called the Shindig that was a themed night. We did it. We did La Disco and, oh, I don't even remember. I don't remember what the other theme was. And it was a night where we would have local bands and you know, performers and would be able to dress up in our favorite vintage and it was great. I had so much fun. And I've had people asking lately when I'm going to do that again. And the answer is I don't know because putting on events is exhausting, especially when you do it by yourself. Even if you have a little bit of help, it's exhausting. But photo shoots, that's where I just feel the most fulfilled and what I love to do. And the collaborations I've done this past year, I really do think have been a great representation of that. Specifically the photo shoots I've done. I've been very fortunate, and I've talked about this before, of the people that I've been able to meet and connect with through having this business who've become great friends. And people that creatively understand me, I understand them, and you can create something amazing. And that's 
that really has been one of my favorite parts of this year is seeing how those relationships have grown and what it has produced. I was just telling my friend Shannon, amazing photographer who owns photography by Shannon Ray. And if you are on our website, go to our lookbook section on Instagram. We've done a lot of, of shoots with her. And there's one in particular, and I was just telling her this last night. Or the night, day I'm recording this was the night prior. <laughs> that there was a shoot we did over the summer in a local park where I was using a lot of the Victorian and Edwardian pieces that I had acquired over the past spring. And that was where I was able to dream up style and outfits. I was given free reign on what I wanted to come up with. And I use this beautiful Edwardian corset, a stunning Victorian corset cover mixed in the decades with some 20s pink satin tap shorts threw in some 1950s very gaudy glamorous rhinestone jewelry and creatively it was one of my favorite shoots because the styling of it mirrored exactly what i'd been seeing in my head and what i get the most excited about and it's fun because on when I originally posted this shoot, and I think I, I called it the uh, like a, the somewhere in time shoot. I love that movie, Jane Seymour, Christopher Reeves. It's a sappy movie, but I love it. <laughs> I think it was done in the eighties. But with that, when I, I remember when I posted that series of photos on Instagram, I had another stylist comment on it, telling me that my outfits would look cleaner and more minimal if I got rid of all of the gaudy jewelry. And when I responded back and, and told him that this was, this was my vision, this was, a, I don't want minimal. I don't care if it's a Victorian or a Edwardian piece. I don't want it to be minimal. I wanted to mix the decades. I wanted it to be gaudy. I wanted it to be ostentatious. I wanted it to look exactly how it did. And I, I never heard back from him because I was that proud and I still am extremely proud of that shoot. And I'm excited for more opportunities like that in the next year. And that's why it's like, find a, a group of people that understand you creatively and want to see you do just as well as you want, you want them to. It really is. I love, I love doing these shoots, you guys. I love it. I've come to the realization that the shop, it, it's almost a means to an end. I have the shop and sell so I can keep doing these experiences because that's what I feel is so important. I can sell people pieces where they can create their own experiences. But on top of it, I can create an experience for other people. It's been the most fun. <laughs> and just seeing how the styling and the use of our archive has progressed really has me excited for projects in the future. But that's what you need. You need things to look forward to. You need inspiration. You need something. Something at the end of this long path, whether it be your week, your month, your year, that gives you motivation to keep going. You need that outlet. And... It does feel really liberating that I've found mine. And now it's the process of growing that and expanding on it, which is very scary, but thrilling at the same time. Now, I mentioned earlier that, again, one of the biggest things this year that has been a huge achievement, personally and professionally, were the two Julian's auctions that I was a part of and was able to acquire pieces from Debbie Reynolds, Elizabeth Taylor, the film, I'm a Cheerleader, beautiful Airte designed headdress from Broadway. It's, it's interesting that 
I can look back on this year and see that this is the year that creatively everything kind of just came together. And I've been able to acquire these pieces and bring them into the shop and the amazing conversations I've had because of them, the people I've met who want to learn more about them, whether it be in-store, online, creating yet another experience and, and learning tool for people to show fashion and garment history and the significance and importance, which is something that I feel like is it's getting lost. Fashion is not taken very seriously. And anybody in that industry can tell you as such. But these pieces are living proof that fashion can change things. They can be a symbol. And the fact that I have these pieces in store for people to, to look at, to see, to absorb, has really just... That's what this year is. I'm going to look back on it, and that's what this year represents and signifies. The dream being kept alive of showing people just how important fashion truly, truly is. Now, another thing this past year that I've been heavily focused on, and really it's because I eliminated other distractions like pop-ups, things like that, that took energy away from things that really do help build and sustain any business. And I went hardcore in to really fine tuning the shop's website. Now, for those of you who don't know, my shop started in 2018, but I mainly did rental styling services and slowly went into full-time retail. In February of 2020, I officially opened at my current location, which is a brick and mortar on a main strip of downtown Fargo. And a month and a half later is when the COVID-19 pandemic happened and I had to, myself, along with many, many other businesses, had to close for about four months. Now, in that time, I came into work. I tried to keep as normal of a schedule as possible. Of course, coming into the shop, not interacting with anybody, you know, just coming in here and trying to get things done. And I took the time to teach myself how to build a website. At that moment, I had recently closed my Etsy shop that I'd had since 2012. Fee increases and things happening on that platform, I didn't feel like it was worth my time and effort continuing on that platform. But then when the pandemic happened and the shutdown happened, I didn't have anything online other than my Instagram and my Facebook. So I spent... The first month of the shutdown, regrouping and recalculating what I was going to do since I couldn't open my doors. So I built my website. And ever since then, in 2020, I've been doing different things to upgrade it, keep it current. I, myself, like a lot of other businesses, can't afford to hire a web designer and someone to do a massive rehaul. That can get really expensive. It's worth it. But if I can teach myself how to do it, for the most part, I'm. that's just what I had to do. So flash forward to this year. I knew what SEO was. But to be honest, I didn't really think it was something I needed to teach myself and get familiar with, mainly because I didn't really understand it. But I spent this past year really trying to understand what SEO was. And through that, doing things on the back end of my site to help increase my SEO and reach more people than I can just in my area of North Dakota. 
and it worked. You don't see those changes right away, but I started reaching people in so many different states, countries, just because I spent time sitting down and teaching myself how to get my website to as many people as I could. Now, because of this, I've been able to send pieces to Spain, Qatar, Australia, Ireland, all over the world, along with a lot of different states, California to Maine to Florida to Texas to New Mexico to Hawaii, you name it. And so this year really has been about fine-tuning and maybe not doing all the fun, glamorous, cool stuff, but really trying to solidify that base. And that's because the world of retail, as we've all seen, is changing. The world is changing. And we're at this point right now where small businesses are put in the position where Whether we want to or not, we have to compete with platforms like Amazon, Sheen. And I know people have been talking about one called Timu, which I don't know anything about, but it seems to be fast rising star in in the retail fast fashion market. So unfortunately, that's another weight on the shoulders of small business owners is you know, adding the hat of being a boss, doing social media, being your own graphic designer. Now you have to be your own web developer (laughs) and strategist. And we'll see where it goes. But really this year has been about fortifying a base because in 2024, I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what my shop is really going to look like. There are a lot of businesses Do you even know if we're going to exist in 2024? I know in Fargo, all week I've been seeing business after business close, people trying to sell their businesses, saying that they can't do in person anymore, they have to do online. And it becomes a very scary reality for a lot of us and one that we'd be naive not to think about and take seriously. It's not a pleasant thought. It scares the hell out of me, but it's one that you have to start getting used to because things can change so quickly. So really, it's having a plan of, of action and being prepared for anything and everything. The question is, what's next for 2024 for Carmine and Hayworth Vintage? And the truth is, I truly don't know. To be honest, every day in the shop is just a day fighting to survive. So it's coming up with creative ways to, I know, keep myself motivated, keep myself inspired, and try to balance out as much as I can the business and the pleasure, which can be very hard to do. It's very lopsided as a small business owner especially one like me who I don't have a staff. I don't have a team. I don't have, it's me. I wear all the hats and I have to be my own motivator. And that gets very daunting and overwhelming. And the first thing for 2024 that I've really been trying to grasp and get used to is the fact that Every year is different. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. No matter what industry I've worked in, I've worked in salon industry. I've worked in small business retail. I've worked in corporate retail. I've worked in many different factions and industries. And even before the pandemic, you could see patterns starting to slip. But they were were still there. Now, post-pandemic shutdown, every year has been different. And like I said earlier, last year, January and February were really good months. 
but then March and April fell off because of weather. And that's where this year it's preparing for the unknown. I don't know what this holiday season is going to look like. When I'm filming this, it's the 15th of November, right before Black Friday, Small Business Saturday. And it's the first year where I don't have an expectation because I learned that you can't have one when you don't know what's what's going to happen. And the truth is, there is a little bit of a freedom in that. I know talking to other business owners, especially those who have had shops and businesses way longer than me, brick and mortar businesses, they would always tell me that Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, that was the weekend that made or break their winter. That was where they made their money so they could go through the winter, pay their rent, and get through it. And every year since, I mean, the past few years, that's been changing. And I know looking at my sales over the past few years, I know my biggest day this past year wasn't on a Small Business Saturday an event like a coffee and cocoa crawl that we do. And we do very well during those, those events, but it was a Saturday and that particular Saturday we had pink playing in town that weekend. And that weekend was huge. It was bigger than any event, any small business Saturday, black Friday that we've ever had. So there's slight comfort in knowing that things don't hinge and rest on just these certain days of the year that you're told as a small business are your make or break days, but it is scary. Not having a pattern can be scary, especially for someone like me who has ADHD. (laughs) I need to know what's happening. I need to be prepared. And it's a huge learning lesson huge learning lesson and really a practice in taking it day by day and being comfortable and attempting to be comfortable with the fact that I'm just not going to know what each month is going to bring. And I have to be okay with that and I have to be prepared for it. But also in this coming year, because I don't know what this year is going to bring my business, I don't have any specific goals of, I want my shop to reach this threshold, or I want this to be the year of whatever. I just want to survive this year, which seems pretty bleak, but it's the truth. And how I intend on doing that, and I think this is a good something good to keep in mind, no matter if it's a job or if it's just life you're trying to get through. I had a therapist when I was in college tell me, (laughs) because I'm a visual person and I like antidotes. I like, I like a visual representation of, of how I'm feeling and what I want. And he told me, visualize, let's say you're weak, like you're a horse in a race. And with that horse in the race, the goal at the end of the race is to get that bucket of votes. I make it through this race, I get that reward. And to find something in your day, in your week, in your month, your year, that you get excited about, that is your reward for getting through that period of time, can be something as simple as, I get through this day and I get to go home and eat a giant piece of cake or I get to see one of my really good friends. It can be anything. And in business, that's especially important. And that's what I've been trying to develop. And I had kind of a a click and aha moment. And I mentioned it earlier with my collaborations where I love styling. I love putting outfits together. I love getting a story and creating a story through clothing 
the art of putting these pieces together. And so my excitement comes from the fact that this year, I want it to be the focus of growing the styling side of the business. And I don't mean personal styling, like you hire me, I go through your closet, and that is not my strength. If you come into the shop and want me to dress you, I find it hard because <laughs> I have a very particular style and way I see things. And unless I really, really know you, which can be impossible in business, I'm not going to know everybody. I have a hard time doing that, but I love conceptual. And I really want to see where that part of my business can take me. And I love doing editorial and commercial styling. I love creative projects like that. And this, I also have to say, wouldn't be something that I look at as being another way to make money. Because the moment you throw money into something that you love, it gets hard to keep your passion for it when you feel like it's part of your survival and your livelihood. The passion can start to erode. So this would be something I do on the outskirts. My payment is being able to get excited about something and create and collaborate. That's my payment to keep my business going because it gives me the mental energy to keep pushing through when days at the shop are tough. And expanding on that, I love styling and I also love collecting. And for years, I've been putting pieces into what I now call the archive. And I've had these dreams of what I want to do with that because these pieces, and I, I have this criticism when it's museums that have clothing or fashion that maybe they put it out once a year. People can't really see it. You can see it online, which is great, but people don't get a chance to see it in person or interact with it. And for years, I've been trying to figure out a way to have the best of all of it. People should interact with the things I've been collecting. There are pieces in my collection that are historically relevant and are great teaching tools. And there's no reason why they can't be touched. They can't be felt. They can't be examined. And so this year is a way for me to explore how I can expand that and use it as a tool. Those of you who've been in my shop and if you get me talking about literally anything, especially things in my archive or the pieces I have on display on my floor, I love to talk. I love when people ask me questions and want to learn more. That's why I've done so many episodes on vintage and size inclusivity. It's one of my favorite conversations to have because I have a piece in my collection from the 1940s that has a dart that you can button and unbutton and it adds four inches to the waist of your dress. So the, the dress grows with you, it shrinks with you. The, the garment was meant to work with you, not you to work with the garment. And I really want to find an opportunity to do that. I had someone ask me the other day, just as I was talking about the clothing I have, the historical relevance, if I ever thought about teaching a class or doing little seminars on my website. And it's something I've always thought about, but it's not something I take lightly. And it's just finding the right method. 
but doing it carefully. But I'm ex- those are things I'm excited about. I have really exciting collaborations coming up in 2024. Ones that really mean a lot to me and are with people that I am so thankful that I met through the shop. Many times I have people come in saying how they feel like the shop is a community space. That they've met people in my store that they are now friends with. That they feel like they never would have met. And I want that to keep spreading in all aspects of the shop. So that's my goal. That's my hope. And I'm cautiously optimistic about 2024. But I think I know I've entered that era of not letting myself get too excited. Because there's always that fear. (laughs) Always that fear that something can, can go wrong. And it always will. And it always does. But just keep that in mind. When we're going through truly these times of turmoil. On a global scale, on a personal level, state level, like national level. It's hard to see how things can get better. When you're surrounded by darkness and, and that feeling of dread and heaviness, but just find those glimmers in your life that you think of and they instantly just make you happy. Keep track of those. Hold on to those. Think about those. Because that really is what's going to keep the, all of us going. Sounds corny. But really, what do you have to lose? And that, just think about that. You know, it's my armchair therapy for you for the day. <laughs> but just think about what are your glimmers? I just told you mine. And they can change, they can evolve. But what gets you excited? Nothing is too small. Just think about it. I know episodes like these are usually not always the most exciting because there's not a strict theme to it. <laughs> but I always do just like wrapping everything up at the end of a season. And when I say season, that's just how I keep track of all of my episodes. Because currently on this podcast, we're in season four. But that's just how I keep track and can catalog what I'm doing. <laughs> but like I said, next year, I'm, I'm cautiously excited. But I'm also excited about the episodes that I'm going to be releasing in the year 2024. And like I said, this is the last episode of 2023. And then I'm just going to start recording these episodes and not stockpile them, but just have a good healthy amount so I don't feel the pressure of having to come up with something to talk about and it ends up just being a filler episode. (laughs) So I'm really, I'm excited. And it's interesting that if I don't see you in store and this is the only interaction we have, the next time we interact, it's going to be a new year. It's trippy to think about. But again, thank you so much to all of you who stop in the store interact with me on my social medias, reach out. Even if you heart a story, I see you. I appreciate you. I may not always be able to reach you and and express that. You just listening to an episode here or there, that means the world. And that is support. 
And it means everything. And I just want to say thank you. And you always have a home here. You always have an ally, a friend. And I'm excited to see where all of us are going to be at in 2024. I do really think this is a turning point for a lot of us. And I think it'll be a good one. But until next time, thank you. I hope the rest of your 2023 is survivable. (laughs) And we can kick 2023 to the curb. And I will see you in 2024. Bye, everyone.